Get all back to answer more goddamn questions. He's here to finalize these goddamn, hopefully get them all done, paid goddamn questions. So this one wasn't printed out. It is from Michael Hedrick. He says, uh, do you think it's acceptable acceptable to show up for a blind date wearing a pungent scent shirt? I fucking sure as fuck do. Wear what you want, bro town. And first two pungent scent shirts. Mm -hmm. I must say, that's a goddamn good pick. Show that fucking uh, tail what she's going to get. You're getting laid for sure in a goddamn pungent shirt if you got pungent shirt if you got the right goddamn if, right goddamn chick. If you got some goddamn deaf core listening to the fucking canoe, then mm, probably not. I think it's important to show show her what you're all about from the get go. I 100 percent agree. I, I was always like that. Probably why the dog fucking wasn't a goddamn uh, chick magnet because I was always a little. Uh, hey, hey th I am who I am. This is what you fucking get. Metal's here to goddamn stay. Stay. And uh, I go to the gym every day. If that's a problem, get lost, get fucked. Maybe keep the shirt, but don't quote lyrics from, from Ben Cobb buttering during foreplay. <laughs> yeah, and that, that might be a little weird. It might, might fucking scare her away there or turn her off. Or I mean, yeah, yeah I, I wouldn't do that personally, but I don't know if it's a no-go. But uh, I guess proceed with caution on that one. Asking for a friend. A friend, all right, huh, bro? You're asking for yourself. Bullshit. You ain't asking for no goddamn friend. So tell that bro, tell that friend to send over a t 10 bucks as well, goddamn it. Having said that, what do you think of Punch and Spence discography? Man, how often do you watch, bro? You should have a pretty good idea. I like it all. 666 fucking skulls. I don't know about 666 fucking skulls and the whole discography. Uh, I'll answer that in a second because he said check out. One song for you to check out slash review. Intest testing ballism. Uh, Blasphemy Resurrected. He gave me the YouTube link, and I did check it out, uh, which is cool, too, because people have been asking me since I started this goddamn channel, for whatever reason, asked me about the, uh, uh, listening to that band. And we had them in stock, and I finally did. Um, yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, I was like, oh, okay, more Swedish death metal we don't need. But it was a really enjoyable song. Had some good fucking leads. Um, cover art uh, and shit like that, at least what just showed on the YouTube uh, channel. It's, again, more that... Uh, I like something a little bit more primitive looking, personally. It's something like this goddamn bird demo, goddamn it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, again, I do like albums that have it, so don't come over here saying they fucking stupid. You like so-and-so when it hasn't. I'm aware of it. I'm not happy about it either. A lot of the later Dying Fetus covers are like this. They're, they're, they're terrible. Like the new Dying Fetus cover, some people are like, that cover was awesome. That cover sucked ass, man. It looks like a goddamn, it looks like a goddamn PlayStation game. That's the best way I can describe it. When it looks anything remotely, um, Artificial intelligence, PlayStation game, Adobe Photoshop to all hell. I don't like it. I want actual drawn artwork, real photos, cool ass band photo like Scroft Go I and I. Grant, half of you fucking idiots can't pull that off because your image is deplorable as fuck. There's some guys that have it, but most most bands of today, they're either deplorable as fuck their image or that's mediocre, just half ass at best. There's zero motherfucking effort. What so goddamn fucking ever? I'll give you an idea. I'll get off on a fucking a little bit of a uh, maybe not a rant, but just a goddamn idea. It, it could cross my mind if uh, the dude is um listening to the other day. I was listening to Evil Army. Any of you fucking motherfuckers don't know me, Evil Army, which is probably half of you. It's literally after Toxic Holocaust. It's not even a question, broskies. It is the best two thousands thrash band ever of all motherfucking time. Well, of course you're going to say that. You released the band. Dude, we have nothing in stock. I have no vested interest. It's long sold the fuck out. Fucking even actual poser-ass fucking, uh, what's Jerry the Pantera? Mr. Pantera himself, Phil Anselmo. Even he thought Evil Army was fucking great. Snagged him up for his fucking poser label. Uh, when we did the, uh, because Evil Army's in the camp, like, it's kind of, they're kind of like Sadistic Intent. They, they have a full length, but they don't. Like, Sadistic Intent has no full lengths. But Evil Army, they had the subtitle, Evil Army, Evil Army. They they market it as a full length, but it's really not. It's like 24 minutes or something. It's less than 30. That's for goddamn sure. It's kind of a 12-inch maxi, but whatever. And they have a bunch of 7-inches, 12-inch maxi. You know, we released Evil Army, Evil Army. We were the second ones to release it. Then Phil Anselmo did this third pressing. Um, I think we might have pressed it even twice. Did a pressing, then a repress, then Phil snagged it. And then we did the I Commander 7-inch. We did the... Uh, the other 12 inch maxi, uh, another seven inch. We've done some releases, right? Great fucking band. Best 2000s fucking thrash band. 
right after Toxic Holocaust. They're even hanging with some songs are even better than Toxic Holocaust. There is nobody better than them. So don't come in here saying you like underground metal. I don't want to hear any shit on Evil Army. If you like metal, you like Evil Fucking Army, bra brah. Okay, I again, all fucking jokes and bullshit aside. The hem, I'll give you. Gore grind, I can understand how anybody in the real metal, they might not like this genre of gore grind. I get it. Recon Future Faction, this sounds like shit. I don't like it. The Tish, who these fucking clowns with drum machine? I disagree. Heaviest band in the goddamn universe represents toughness, represents men. All these meme ass fucking posers showing up to the show. It'll be down to another, it, it's gonna be down to a 50 man crowd 10 years from now. Guarantee me. All those trend hoppers are gonna be gone. Don't worry. Tish ain't gonna have all these trend fucking hoppers. All those true heads will still be there. But I get it if someone doesn't like the goddamn Tish. That's real man fucking music. One of the reason people say it's not real man music, again, all this meme dumb shit, but all those poses are going away. Don't you motherfucking worry. 20, 30, they're gone. So, having said that, uh, dude, if you like heavy metal, traditional metal, and old school death metal, thrash, Evil Army's up your goddamn fucking alley, right? Fucking greatness. Aggressive as fuck. Tunes for days, right? Well, listen to my and uh, they have a, you know, they have a pretty decent image. It's not bad. They look like a bunch of kind of like crusty punks because there's the, there's a punk influence in Evil Army. It sounds like, the best way I can describe Evil Army, it sounds like Metallica Kill em All era sped up on fucking meth with more aggression and a very strong punk attitude added to it. That's the best way I can describe it. Fucking phenomenal, right? But what I would do, like, if I started, because they have the whole goddamn uh, Sergeant Kill and the, uh, the Evil Army guy, right? What I would do as an image, just giving out ideas for bands, for a cool fucking band image, I would personally dress up like fucking uh, military guys. I would wear full-ass Army fucking clothes. You know, they have their name in their pocket. I would get that removed or have somebody custom do it for, like, you got Rob Evil in the band, right? I would just fucking have Rob Evil as his name on there. Um, and the other one says U.S. Army, says should say Evil Army. And then one guy, I would have uh, their names be one guy, whatever other than it was Michael Murder, Michael Murder on another one. You know, the bones, rest in peace. That that's, would be his fucking gimmick. And then one of the guys, their, their, their thing is they're wearing bullet belts. Or they're wearing, and then one guy might have a fucking goddamn army knife on the side of them, right? The drummer, which might be kind of kind of hard to do, but still do it, may have like a goddamn military backpack on his back. And then I have them wearing the goddamn fucking uh, army helmets too, um, shit like that. Um, but, but but make it like dirty, crusty looking, and and a metal related. You know, you can if you wanted to throw on some. Then they'd be wearing combat boots too, black combat boots. That'd be going to that would be like fit the band, the whole name, the whole shtick. Just giving out air. What bands motherfucking don't do. And if they had that that image that shtick, and let's say they use that as an album cover, or something that would be fucking better. But the intestinal ballism or whatever you brought brought up, yeah, it was kind of cool. The, those those type of covers turn me off. Again, I do like some albums that they've had those. The Dying Fetus ones. Uh, Immolation has a couple of those. Fucking is it uh, Majesty is Decay kind of like that. And it's kind of, yeah, it kind of looks fucking stupid. Um, not in the photo, sh the, the, the fucking PlayStation game looking covers, man. I'm just not. I can't fucking stand them. It's fucking stupid as hell. Uh, the song itself, I thought it was fairly enjoyable. Now, I don't know if it was YouTube or whatever. But dude, what the fuck? The song literally cut off right in that like it was weird. It's like in the middle of solo and the song's over. I'm like, is that just YouTube's thing? Is that how the song ends? I thought that was a little abrupt and weird. Um definitely that particular song, like I said, was enjoyable. I don't know why everybody was creaming their goddamn shorts, uh, messaging me early in the year or when I first started channel because I, I had at least five people ask that question to random different people. You heard the intestine ballism. First off, get a better name. I can't pronounce that shit. Not even sure if I'm saying it right. Second of all, it's like it's sweetest death metal. You know, the song I said, oh, no, it's not. I thought some guy said it was grindcore or something. I don't know. What I heard was the sweetest death metal. I was like, this is more sweetest death metal. Again, I like that kind of music. And if I'm at a party or something, I'd much rather somebody playing that or more more sweetest death metal. You don't need type of bands in the background than me having to listen to Rush or Van Halen or stupid shit. I want to hear some metal, brah, brah. So I much I do prefer that kind of music. But for me to want to buy and own it. I'm like, why do I need it over inverted? Why do I need it over goddamn uh, dismember, carnage, grave, uh, unleashed, first two in tombs? Like, why, why do I need it over that? You know, then other bands, the Crown, Desultory. You know what I mean? I just, I just, well, why? Well, I don't need it over that. And yet, if you wanted more Swedish death metal bands that sounded just pure Swedish that came along and did it fairly well, I think the Kings are entrails. 
And then you had stuff like Sentinex, and well, Sentinex was early, uh, but after Sentinex, uh, Demonical. Again, that was more Swedish death metal you kind of didn't need. Um, sounded like everybody else. But the reason I bought some of their stuff is they had some songs that were like undeniably, these are really, really good fucking songs. And I've said it before, like check out the song Towards Greater Gods. Fucking phenomenal songs. They had some standout songs that you're like, holy fuck, these are really, really good songs. Yes, it's the, the sound itself is nothing original whatsoever. Now, not all their songs are standout like that. I'm not saying that, but they do have a good, good amount of them and it's all at least uh enjoyable uh but they had some songs that really 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 stood out so that's why uh i would pick that guy picked them up that's why and to answer your question on pungent stench for me first two albums only the, you know the demos <coughs> they're splits they're splits but they just split just disharmonic orchestra split with blood that shit's fucking great uh to be completely honest with you I heard the Club Mondo Bizarre, the third record. I thought it was so fucking bad, unlistenable, that I never listened to anything after. With the exception of, I remember the early 2000s, I listened to it once. Was it Masters of Morals, Servants of Sin? Is that what it's called? Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be. Uh, I remember when that was the new album at the time. It didn't even have the Punch and Stench logo. It didn't have the Punch and Stench aesthetic as far as in the packaging. And I'm like, this looks dumb. Put it on anyways, because I think we got copies of right around this, right around when Hells was brand new. And we got them in stock. I'm like, this is pungent stench. I'm like, this is like, it's not like, I thought it was better than Clamondo as far as a record by itself. But it was like, I, I, I don't get it. This is, this is not pungent stench. This is, again, Metallica pulling a load. Or if you say for albums that you like, better examples, because everybody hates fucking load. Well, mo mo anyone that know. This is a carcass fucking heartwork. This is a carcass swan song. Like, what do they do? Like, I don't, I don't get it. This isn't carcass, but I actually like those albums. Like, I like swan song. I think it's a good record. I think songs like Polarize, Keep On Riding the Free World shit, they're just good, like, death and roll songs, but they should have changed their name. It's not, that's not carcass. When I was listening to Punch and Stench, it wasn't that it was unlistenable. I was just like, it's, it's, I thought it was mediocre music, but I'm like, this is not Punch and Stench. Then from there, I never heard anything. I thought about putting on that Amputee album because it looked kind of cool. Uh, I thought the image on the back with the guys missing limbs and shit, how they uh, photoshopped that. Uh, it looked good. Uh, the, the whole they had something cool looking and the old logo. But I'm like, just in my mind, I mean, Punch and Stench was done by the second album. Second album was the last album. And even, I, don't get me wrong, I do like the second album, Ben Caught Buttering. I think it's fucking great. Shrunken Mummified Bitch, fucking amazing song. Um, it's just. You can tell when listening to that album, it was the beginning of the end. You can tell they're sprinkling shit in there. You're like, yeah, they're a teeter totter. Uh, and, and, and overall, it's not as good as For God Your Soul, For Me, Your Flesh. For, for God Your Soul, For Me, Your Flesh, in my opinion, that is one of the greatest grindcore records ever, ever, by a fucking very large margin, too. Not only just for the, the songs and the songwriting and the uh, just how you know enjoyable that is. Dude, it just had these raunchy, nasty, grotesque, fucking, just dirty fucking lyrics about like that nobody was fucking doing. Not even the carcass and shit like that. Carcass was more about the pathology and shit like that. It was like more gross. Theirs was almost like, then those like the perverted, just, just, just disgusting lyrics that nobody was fucking doing. So that's what made them so goddamn great. Now they had that some that, that perversion on Ben Caught Buttering too, but the music wise, I think they even had the perversion going on uh, Clamondo. But I remember Clamondo being completely unlistenable. Last time I heard that, I think I was 16 years old. So that's 22 years ago. Um, so they're one of the bands. What they, they they disappointed me, and I never fucking checked anything out since. For example, Morbid Angel put out the Illu whatever. Thought it was terrible. Morbid Angel's got a new album. Tucker's back. Who cares? For starters. I didn't even listen to it. I have just no interest to it. I mean, I'm not saying I, I refuse to listen to it. I just, I, I just, I, I just don't have the desire to. It could be good. I just, I just sincerely doubt it. You know what I mean? That's just the way I work with bands. Once they put out a turd or definitely two turds in a row, I just, I just, I just, um, it's, I'm not saying that's the right method. I just discredit them. I just, to me, they don't exist no more. The band's done. The band that I knew is done. For example, like it's weird to me when people are like. Have you heard Creator album from like 2008? No. I think the last Creator album I heard was Extreme Aggression. Like, was that one 1989? I don't think I heard. I've never sat down and listened to a 90s up 
definitely not 2000s creator album. Destruction, the same thing. It's kind of like, why, why would I? Oh, they're great, bro. Maybe I'm missing out. I just, I, I thought, to me, creator doesn't exist no more. Creator was done by... I'll give them up to extreme aggression, but honestly, to me, terrible certainty was like the last thing, and even that was kind of pushing it. It was just to, to me, terrible certainty was kind of like it was the south of heaven to rain and blood, as terrible certainty is the pleasure to kill. It, it was still metal, true, similar, very similar formula, similar sound, but it's just much more watered down, tame, and boring. That's the way I took it. But you still put on, you're like, you still enjoy it. Yeah, here's a good song here and there. Like, you listen to uh, South of Heaven, Suicide Silence. You know, this is a fucking goddamn, is that what it's called? No, that's, that's the name of that goddamn band. Uh, um, whatever the fuck it's called. Silent, whatever the hell it is. Uh, Silent Solution, whatever the hell. Obviously, I don't listen to that album very often. Uh, that, that's a good song. Um, the Actually, yeah, they do have a song, Suicide Something. I remember that being just bad. Title track is fine, but lame. That's kind of how terrible certainty is. You're kind of enjoying it, but you're like, compared to Pleasure to Kill, this is just a downgrade and lame. Extreme Aggression, barely remember it, but I remember it being at least an acceptable album as well. Then I've heard tracks. Don't they have a, a song called like Antichrist 666 or something like the 2000s? I think I walked in on that. Yeah, yeah, who are we listening to? I'm like, I have no idea. It's creator, bro. I'm like, fucking oh. It sounds nothing like them whatsoever. So when people ask me that, well, why? Why would I listen to Creator? Like I don't, I don't get it. Again, there, there, there could be albums I'm missing out on, but that's just how I took it. Once they're watered down, crappy. That's why I never heard all this. You heard Slayer? God hates us all. I, well, I kind of did. I walked. I told my goddamn Hot Topic story. Walked on and some tool bags to listen to it. Um, I was like, I don't need to, dude. I know it sucks. It's <laughs> like I just know it fucking sucks. So it's one of those. It's, it's kind of one of those things. That's what most of those two thousands and nineties slayers. I've heard parts just like that. I haven't heard. I was like, you don't, you don't need to, man. They're already watered down and sucked before that. What was the chances they are going back and they are completely awesome? And again, I said the last album they did because I heard I, I, that Repentless. I thought the title track Repentless was good, and the song Take Control, which I think was the song right after it. I thought that was good. The rest of the album was pretty much tossing in the trash. Not much better than I would expect. Better than Diabolical Musica, but it was kind of like yeah, just useless songs that I didn't need. Kind of can't punch and sense into the camp. That sense. Maybe I'm missing out though. Hey, goddamn question. Michael Prince. Hey, J Dog. I'm attaching my latest blood work. All my other labs are good. So to save you the time, I'm just uh, attaching my test panel. Yeah, I looked over and I think I emailed you back. But you said to do this as a question too. I've been doing 90 milligrams every four days since 8 12 23. <laughs> Did you? <laughs> Is that the protocol your doctor gave you? If so, I guess I'm not gonna say don't follow your doctor's advice. Um, but yeah, you 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 do new guys, man. You guys <laughs> you crack me up. Uh the body goes, they just gave you a cook kick out of that, man. No, I do 90 milligrams. It's like so if you're getting it from your doctor, you're getting a bottle of test sip, 200 milligrams per cc. And I, I do agree, just split it, split it up. Don't do every four days, dude. You do every Monday and Thursday, twice a week. Mondays, Thursdays, or Tuesdays, Fridays. It's just, just do that. Let's just let's stop complicating. You got to count the fucking days. It's just because you, you're just a lifelong. You're doing this for the rest of your life. I mean, make it just easy. Just take half a CC fucking Monday, half a CC Thursday for fuck for fuck's sakes. Just round it up to two hundred mg. What do you do? do fucking it's just do half and half. I mean, and that's like. It's funny. You talk to guys. I remember it was even, uh, did he say this on camera? Or he said this to me in person. I can't remember. Uh, Milo Sarshev, who's a retired pro bodybuilder. He's the guy that brought insulin into the bodybuilding. Made it famous. Came up with the whole protocols. Figured out how to use it without killing yourself, et cetera, right? Um, he's retired. He's 60 years old. And he still takes, you know, mild dosages. because he, he, he argues up, down, left, or right. He's like, you're stupid if you don't. If you want to be healthier and more optimal, you take some fucking androgens. He's like, they, they downgrade us over time. And like, Kind of agree with him, to be honest with you. No, he's, he's a, what do you got to ask? Again, I can't remember if he said in a video or whatever. Fuck it, he said to me, he did say, don't say it. Fine, you know what? Whatever. He, he's, open, he's an open book. I think he would say it. Um, I've ever asked, like, well, what do you uh, take, like, now, now that you're you're 60? Because you, you say it on just, just a TRT dose, 600 milligrams. I mean, just 200 milligrams. It's like, ah, well, you know, you know it's a body book, man. It's a 3cc syringe, you know, so you just you, you fill that fucking thing up. I'm like, holy shit. So, yeah, you don't waste a 3cc syringe. 
<laughs> and uh, that's a kind of an ongoing joke in the Bible world. They all say, dude, fill that fucking thing up. Now, I'm not promoting that. I'm not saying to do that. But in his mind, he's like, yeah, no. So, you know, like a CC a test, a CC a deck up for the joints, and, you know, maybe like a CC a Prima Bowl, which is still, I mean, that is a mild mini cycle. Um, but I think you could do that very, very, very long term with no side effects or health consequences. If you're living a very healthy lifestyle, your blood markers all, all look good. Um, you're donating blood. You're uh, ma making sure your blood pressure is staying under control. If it's not, get out of goddamn blood pressure medication, things like that. You imagine all the shit that you know what the manager look for. I, 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 I don't think what he's doing is anything dangerous by any stretch of the definition whatsoever. Um, but the average American going to eat at McDonald's and doing dumb shit and fucking drinking beers multiple times a week and they don't exercise, they don't do cardio, they don't go to the gym. No, dude, that's not going to work. It's just going to make, it's going to, it's going to emphasize and make everything worse that you already have because your lifestyle is fucking dog shit. This, I go home after work, I sit on the couch and crack open a beer. If that's you, fix that shit, bro, bro. That's dog shit. That's no good. That's you're just rotting away. No good lifestyle. Grant, don't care what you do. Just keep giving out free felt and helpful advice. Um, so, so yeah, dude, you're not going to drop, I mean, for fuck's sakes, man, just, just do a half season every fucking Monday and Thursday. My goal isn't to be a bodybuilder. You're not going to be a goal. You're not going to be a bodybuilder on, on 200 makes a test. I'll tell you that right now. Not even close. Um, unless you're, unless you have very, very good genetics and a very good work, work ethic. Nobody's even going to, nobody's even going to know outside that you even lift. They might be like, Hey dude, you exercise. If, again, if that's assuming you're busting your ass, you exercise like, you, you know, you, you're a bike rider, you, you know, you're a swimmer. No one's ever going to think, are you a bodybuilder, dude? You will never be asked that in the public ever on 200 milligrams of test. Again, unless you're a fucking Ronnie Coleman genetic freak. There's exceptions. You're not one of them. I can just tell this by reading this. My goal is just to stay in shape and look good. Yeah. Uh, like I said, do, not, do what your doctor says. Your labs will give you like an 800 total test. Uh, so if you did 100, every day, they'll probably put you at 1,000. Why not be at 1,000? Because if you get 1,000, which is the upper limit, pretty much more than what almost everybody's producing, but that a natural body can produce that, just most ain't. Um, why not be at a thousand? There's no negative. It's not going to fuck any, fuck any of your health markers up. That's what blows my mind. Like, I, I, I always say when people say that, well, which of my test levels be if they're trying to be in health? Get them to a thousand, like 1300, man. Your labs aren't going to be affected by that. I've seen it time and time again. So it's like, why, why not? Why not? Why not be a little out there? Let's get, dude. This is all they. For starters, doctors know how to read goddamn numbers and charts. They're told these numbers, these guidelines go in this. They're, 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 it's basically the computer telling them what to fucking do. I'm not saying they're completely dummies because they have an education and shit. And they do know some stuff, but they're taught. The computer tells you to do this. You stay in these goddamn guidelines. Why? And the, I can tell you why it is because the goddamn system is to keep the fucking the, the, the us, the, we the people, weak and meek. As, as as just in line, as as useless as possible, but you can't let them die because that's the goddamn machine that, that we were the ones that feed the machine for ma making the money and spending the money and keeping the masses riches. That's, that's what it's all about, dude. So why not be optimal? You're already fucking sticking that needle in you. So, and, and why? Let me measure it out to like the one line before the half. Just go to the half. You'll be and then just for less confusion. But where you're at, yes, you're good. Your levels are good. You're healthy. Those that's awesome at an 800 level. That's it's kick ass. You're kicking more ass than other people. Um, but I'm just I'm just telling you for just simplicity, just to make your life a little easier. I would like to increase my test dosage. Um, I mean, even increase the half a cc. Oh, what do you think will be optimal increase from 90 milligrams every four days? Yeah, since you're doing every four days, go to 100 uh, just every Monday and Thursday. Do that. Um, you shouldn't have any sides. Now, if you're a high aromatase uh, producer, you produce a lot of aromatase en enzyme, you might need to add in something like uh, eximostain, also known as aromacin. That's a mild anti-estrogen uh, to lower the estrogen because some people don't need it. Some people need it on 200 milligrams. Some people don't. I've seen guys, they don't fucking need it on 300. Um, that's all. You just got to go by labs, though. See what your estradiol levels are. Um but most, it's, it's, it's a 50-50 chance of a coin toss. You might need it, you might not. Just a low dose. And where you want to dose that best way, on 200 milligrams, since you're doing this long-term for life, so you do your shots Monday, Thursday, right? Wednesday and, no, Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, the day after the shot, basically take the tablet. Take a 12, 12 and a half milligram aromacin. That's a half a dose. That should definitely do it. If that don't, then go to a full dose, 25 milligrams the day after he shot. So you take your Romacin Tuesdays and Fridays.
shots Mondays and Thursdays, Roma's and Pill Tuesday and Fridays because it peaks right around 18 hour mark and you don't start aromatizing until the, until the peak hits. So just go down the day after. Don't take it with the shot. That'll that's that that'll definitely solve your problem. That's the only other thing you might run you might run into. Okay, so you got to add one other fucking drug that has no side effects. And don't get me started on the pussies. There's no goddamn side effects. Shut the fuck up, bitches. Lastly, what is your opinion on GH peptides? The clinic I got my test shots from doesn't offer HGH injections. I'm better off just getting HGH. Yeah, fuck those goddamn peptides. Yeah, by the way, they're they're becoming illegal as we speak now. Anyways, um, these these uh, where you're going, uh, Rick Collins just did a um thing. He's kind of like the PED fucking uh, lawyer of the goddamn everything. He knows all the laws up, down, left, and right. Uh, when any of the guys get, get in trouble, that's who they go to is Rick Collins. And um, he just did an interview. Uh, the FDA, has, as we speak, within an, it might be before the end of this year, all these GH peptides and shit that, you're, that doctors can't prescribe now, um, they're not going to be able to anyway. So you're not going to be able to get it anyways. Just uh, like I said, sourcing from the dog. No, I don't sell shit. I just know. I'm just in that. I'm in that scene as well as I'm in the body. Metal. I'm in the in the, uh, the metal scene, so I know a lot of people shit like that. Who does what? Who gets what? From where? I can just guide you in the right direction. Just take just take real HGH, man. Uh, those those peptides are no even close to is the same thing, anyways. Um, and again, because you were gonna get it, it sounds like through your doctor, your clinic, you're not gonna be able to anyways. So don't worry about it. That's coming to an end, regardless. Go straight HGH, three to four I use before bed. You can share this question on the video if you'd like, or just email me back. I really don't need the hundred dollar a month plan because I have enough lifting and nutrition knowledge. Yeah, that's a smart thing, man. Just send a question like that. You had just a couple questions like that. You have enough info on yourself. Do the, do the ten dollar question. You know, I, I even uh, comment on your labs. I believe like email. I emailed you back. I know that, and they answered on on uh, video here for you. So yeah, you're fucking good to go. I kind of gave you my answer on that. If you got any other questions, just go ahead and fucking ask. But. That's it for this one. Comments, questions, energy, nothing to do. Put a comment, scans, and bring the morning later. God damn it.